No. But it might be time for my man Scott to spring on some Ravages of War because <laughs> I mean Medley What's Mages. Wrong with getting Medley, Medley Mages a card in the format. You can split two and two. Yeah, I guess like I all right, I'm with you. I, I can see it. See Chalice for one. Oh, Wasteland. That could really set Scott back a little bit here. You got a Mox Diamond too? Which part is it? You want a Ravages of War, huh? So there goes the city. See if he floats any mana. And it was actually Scott who received the game loss. That's why he's on the play. So we want to make sure we have that right for you guys. So Edward's going to take a draw here. He draws a copy of Mox Diamond. Going to sacrifice this fetch land. Uh, Crucible, of course, quite good in this deck. You can Wasteland Lock someone. You can bring City of Traders back. There's a lot you can do. Unkillable Mistress Factories. You can start getting fancy with Flagstones or Trocare. I mean, searching for a tiger. We'll see if he's going to get like a loam engine online or what have you. Also allows him to combo, of course, with Armageddon, rebuild his mana base pretty yeah, easily after that. This is also true. Maybe it's time to go loaming. It's going to go to. Okay. The old grudge. So, yes, Edward knows what he's playing against. He's going to take care of the Crucible. That's really rough for Scott as he clearly had a lot invested in this. Although he just drew Rest in Peace, which is quite nice. Yeah, both these guys definitely know what they're playing against. Rest in Peace is insane. So now there goes Fedner's Graveyard. So he's going to play some Honest Magic. A little surprised to see Crucible still in the deck uh, when paired alongside Rest in Peace. Yeah. But perhaps he shaves some copies out. A wasteland, take care of that wasteland. Wants to just kind of stop the mana, play a thespian stage, get everything kind of set up for dark depths because Source of Plowshares is out of the equation right now because Chalice being on one. Mm -hmm. So this actually could end up working against Scott. Another wasteland at the top here for Edward. You can see he has a loam that he can't quite do anything with. Mm -hmm. He has multiple mox diamonds without extra lands in his hand, so the same was pretty heavily bent on the graveyard between Ancient Grudge and Life of the Loam. You can see the effectiveness of a card like Rest in Peace against this Jun Death Slopes. Scott draws the City of Traitors. Means he can power something big out, but he just has to pass the turn back. Draw of Entomb here for Edward, about as bad as it gets. His hand's actually quite poor right now. Mm -hmm. Just gonna pass the turn back. I'm sure he would love to cast that Faithless looting, but he cannot as, again, the Chalice of the Void is set to one. Yep. Peacekeeper of the draw for Scott. Yeah, a little I was like, awkward what, I was this say, what is that old card? Neither player can attack, and it has an upkeep of a white and a colorless. Well, he's priced it. And if Edward draws a wasteland, Peacekeeper goes bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buckle up, because Tabernacle just came off the top. We're going to have a whole bunch of fun now. Why does Ke Peacekeeper have a point of power? Not super clear. <laughs> but so you say Scott paying three mana here, one, two for the Peacekeeper and one for the Tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah, why does Peacekeeper have a point? That makes no sense. I wasn't on the Weatherlight development team, so I can't answer that question. I didn't even consider why, they, why this makes no sense at all. It is neither functional nor makes much flavor <laughs> sense. <laughs> Liliana's going to come in. going to start making people discard now. Yeah. I guess it would be kind of strange to have a human be an O1. Oh, there's, be there's, other, there's other O1 humans. All right. It looks like... Scott is. Will you pay the toll? Gonna hold on to the peacekeeper. I'm just gonna give it away. Yeah. Raven's crime can't be cast because I mean can be cast, but not gonna do any good. Edward, to see what he's gonna discard. Mox Diamond. These decks are much better at preventing each other from taking game actions than they are that doing any game actions themselves. And now Scott has drawn a tabernacle. Take that. This, this actually is kind of nice for him here as Urborg is in play, so it is a fourth mana. Mm -hmm. uh, he can next turn, for example, play the land and in conjunction with the City Traders and his other mana, play Smokestack. Not actually clear how far that gets him as 
He has no card advantage engine again, no crucible in play. Graveyard shut off anyway because of rest in peace, but it does appear to me to be better than simply paying mana for Peacekeeper every turn and discarding to Liliana the Veil. It's pretty rare that you actually see uh, this kind of board state and just prison decks going up against each other because that's what you kind of classify these decks as, is just two prison decks just kind of trying to stop each other from doing something. I think it's time to let go of this Peacekeeper. No way. Keep the peace. All right, the peace is gone. No more peace. You know, just showed up, hung out for a couple turns, <laughs> yeah. and then bounced. Has, has a point of power, can't attack. <laughs> showed up, say, said hi to everyone, yeah. you know? No creature, no other creatures in play. <laughs> yeah. and then had to hit the road. So Scott has, you know, now he can actually cast Armageddon if he was so in, feeling so inclined, or Smokestack. I'm not sure how much I like the Armageddon play against a Liliana this close to going ultimate, but you see Scott add Smokestack to his board here. Yep. See whatever he's able to draw this turn. There is the old Smokestack. It adds soot counters, and it causes each player to sacrifice each turn. A lot of those out there, a lot of the old soot counters. I always like Smokestack flavor standpoint. It's a sweet card. It was one of my first real FNM decks. Yeah? That I was actually one of the matches with. Like the smokestack, like Covetous Dragon deck? Is that what I'm thinking of or no? I mean, that was a deck, but I was just playing with Stone Rains, Pillages, Avalanche, Riders. You're that guy. You're the, Sandstone you're the, Needle. You're the land destruction guy when you were young? I was the first one in our playgroup to own four ports, so I just went to town. Ah, yeah, there you go. Make sure, you do, make sure that none of your friends can cast any of their oh, spells. Oh, yeah, me and my buddies, we had some... I mean, there were some dark days with our friendship <laughs> start, well, while I was enjoying that deck. Let's see what Edward's able to get together here. Oh, well, back up there, he has to sacrifice a permanent to smokestack. Yes, he does. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's an announced trigger that Scott has to take care yeah, of. Yeah, because it's his card. It's yeah. Sulfuric Vortex-esque, right? Yeah. It's a symmetrical thing that Scott controls. Yeah, well, you did draw a card already, so. I think what the ruling here is, is that, you know, you have to, you ask the, basically, the, the ability to place a trigger on the stack goes on and, and the opponent's like, do you want this to happen? And the opponent will oftentimes just say yes. It's really weird how they changed the rule on this. I mean, it is weird from a timing standpoint, a physical tournament, right? Because you have to say, go, stop, before you draw, yeah. physically to announce your smokestack. Yes. So uh, there is room for, for some amount of angle shooting here. Uh, I don't know exactly how this gets ruled, but I never quite like the way that these trigger rules affect things with triggers in both players' upkeeps, like mm -hmm. Sulfuric Vortex and, and like Smokestack, because there's just some fuzziness about how the player controlling it has to actually announce it and stop the other player from going into their draw step. I assume we are getting a judge to sort this out. Yep. We will find out momentarily exactly what is going on here with the ruling. And as soon as we do find out, we'll obviously let you guys know there at home. But we are in a very strange board state between Edward and Scott, where you got a smokestack, you got a Liliana, players have some lands, there's a chalice on one, there's a rest in peace in place, so Edward can't use this graveyard. You know, just your run-of-the-mill legacy action. This is pretty standard play. I mean, yeah. this is... There's Delver, and there's Sneak and Show, and then there's these two decks, and that's kind of the core <laughs> of the Legacy format. Yeah, this is just a this is just a day in the life of playing playing old Legacy. This is why this is easily my favorite format because crazy stuff like this happens. Well, from a coverage standpoint, it is definitely really sweet. I mean, some of the rounds, one player in dies really fast or isn't necessarily doing anything, but in terms of the texture of the experience, how different are the rounds? What's the entire story like? I think Legacy is the most fun format to cover. We'll see what exactly what does happen here. It looks like we've moved forward now. Liliana's ultimate being placed in the stack. Yeah, apparently Scott missed whatever window it is that he is to announce. Yeah, because it's, yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't say it's his effect, something like that. It's just a, a little bit more confusing. So it looks like Edward is splitting lands and spells here. And now, with that Chalice of the Void gone, uh, potentially all hell breaks loose as... Edward can start using his graveyard again, can start Ravens Criming, Faithless Looting, the whole nine. Now the question is, when the permanents are sacrificed, when Rest in Peace was in play to Liliana, where do the permanents go? Where does Smokestack go? Where does Chalice go? It doesn't <laughs> matter that much, yeah. fortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's the big question. Is it removed from the game? Is it in play? All we need now is just a humility, 
Great. That's all we need. I think this is where, I think Edward at this point is going to actually eradicate any memory of Scott participating in the game, <laughs> as he will cause him to lose every card in his hand and every land. Yes. This is the plan. Which is a combo with Liliana, because your opponent draws a card every turn. Some percentage of the time it will be a spell. Yes. And then you get to plus Liliana. Ah, That's really yes. Lots of synergies here. Sounds like to me we might see some Jun depths in the uh, in the top eight here. Already up the game. And there's a oh, beat that. Oh, nice. Small That's pox that tough guy. A little late to the party here. There's a crop rotation. Oh, well, I see what's happening here. I have a feeling we're going to go for a 2020. We are, and Scott is going to concede yeah. the game. So all the judge stuff, everything else, we made it through, and Edward Fender is 8-1, and one, and he's going to be moving on to the elimination rounds with at least one Jun Depps. Kennen couldn't make it through, Todd Anderson couldn't make it through, but Edward could. So yeah. if you like Life in the Loman Friends, you get to watch that later tonight. You know, this is pretty crazy. I I've talked a lot about the slowness with which legacy metagames adapt just because of card availability issues. It's not... No, everyone doesn't have 